morning. Welcome to Trinity on Christ the King Sunday. I invite you to join us for worship by turning to page 355. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. be with you. Kneeling, let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, whose will it is to restore all things in your well-beloved Son, the King of kings and Lord of lords, mercifully grant that the people of the earth, divided and enslaved by sin, may be freed and brought together under his most gracious rule, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading is to Samuel. Now these are the last words of David, the oracle of David, son of Jesus, the oracle of the man whom God exalted and anointed of the God of Jacob, the favorite of the strong one of Israel. The Spirit of the Lord speaks through me, His word is upon my tongue. The God of Israel has spoken. The rock of Israel has said to me, one who rules over people justly, ruling in the fear of God, is like the light of morning, like the sun rising on a cloudless morning, gleaming from the rain on the grassy land. Is not my house like this with God? For he has made with me an everlasting covenant, ordered in all things and secure. Will he not cause to prosper all my help and my desire? But the godless are like thorns that are thrown away, for they cannot be picked up with the hand. To touch them, one uses an iron bar or the shaft of a spear, and they are entirely consumed in fire on the spot. The word of the Lord. Today's appointed psalm is 132. Lord, remember David and all the hardships he endured, how he swore an oath to the Lord and vowed a vow to the mighty one of Jacob. I will not come under the roof of my house nor climb up into my bed. I will not allow my eyes to sleep nor let my eyelids slumber until I find a place for the Lord, a dwelling for the mighty one of Jacob. The ark, we heard it was, 
Epiphrata. We found it in the fields of Jerem. Let us go to God's dwelling place. Let us fall upon our knees before his footstool. Arise, O Lord, into your resting place, you and the ark of your strength. Let your priests be clothed with righteousness. Let your faithful people sing with joy. For your servants David's sake, do not turn away the face of your anointed. The Lord has sworn an oath to David. In truth, he will not break it. A son, the fruit of your body, will I set upon your throne. If your children keep my covenant and my testimonies that I shall teach them, their children will sit upon your throne forevermore. For the Lord has chosen Zion. He has desired her for his habitation. This shall be my resting place forever. Here will I dwell, for I delight in her. I will surely bless her provisions and satisfy her poor with bread. I will clothe her priests with salvation and her faithful people rejoice and sing. There will I make the horn of David flourish. I have prepared a lamp for my anointed. As for his enemies, I will clothe them with shame, but as for him, his crown will shine. The second reading is from Revelation 1. Grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come. And from the seven spirits who are before his throne and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead and the ruler of the kings of the earth. To him who loves us and freed us from our sins by his blood and made us to be a kingdom priest serving as God and Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Look, he is coming with the clouds. Every eye will see him, even those who pierced him. And on his account, all the tribes of the earth will wail. So it is to be. Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. The word of the Lord.
holy gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Pilate entered the headquarters again, summoned Jesus, and asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered him, Do you ask this on your own, or did others tell you about me? Pilate replied, I'm not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and chief priests have handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not from this world. If my kingdom were from this world, my followers would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not from here. Pilate asked him, So you are a king? Jesus answered, You say that I am a king, for this I was born, and for this I came into the world, to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. Gospel of the Lord. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be pleasing to you. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, good morning. Welcome to Trinity on Christ the King Sunday. It's hard to believe we're coming to the end of another year in the church calendar. But here we are, it's the Sunday when we identify Christ as being king, the rightful king of heaven and the rightful king of you and I. You know, when I think of a king, I don't immediately think of Jesus. I don't mean that in a sacrilegious way, but I mean that in the way that Jesus came. When you look at his life and his ministry and what he was about, he doesn't come across very kingly does he? When I think king, I think pomp and circumstance. I think royalty. I think crowns and diamonds and emeralds and big banquet halls and parties and castles. And yet Jesus had none of those things because Jesus wasn't king of earthly things in that way. He wasn't about all that kind of stuff. He was about his father's business. And his father's business was about you. You see, Jesus was a different kind of king. His kingdom is not of this world. Here's the picture of King Jesus that we have. Shackled, beaten, on trial, and all, all alone in front of a backwoods Roman governor. He was there in the Roman region office of Jerusalem, itself a picture of a crumbling kingdom. Israel was once mighty, powerful nation, but now crushed under the mighty force of Rome. He's, on, he's being accused, and unfairly, might I add, and his disciples had pretty much abandoned him, and his right-hand man denied him multiple times and will continue to deny him all the way until the rooster crows, as we know. And a few hours later, he would go on to bleed and die on a Roman execution device. Behold our king, Jesus. Pilate asked him in our gospel lesson today, Are you the king of the Jews? And Jesus said, Who told you that? In other words, it's time to confess up, Pilate. Nobody gets here by accident. It's time to confess up. Do you think I'm the king of the Jews? And Pilate's kind of saying the same thing to him. No. Are you the king of the Jews? It's time to get real. I'm about to hand you over and have you killed. Tell me who you are. Verse 36, Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my servants would have been fighting that I might not be delivered over to the Jews. But my kingdom is not from the world. He didn't deny his kingdom. He didn't deny his kingship. He simply qualified it. And he didn't qualify it in kingship by giving the don't you know who I am routine or the don't you know who my father is routine, no. He qualified his kingship not by proclaiming himself and his power, 
but by describing what his kingdom is not. His kingdom is not of this world, therefore he's like no other king the world has ever seen. His kingdom is not of violence. It's not defined by power. It's not defined by gaining as much control as he could. His kingdom was one of sacrificial love. All this talk of kings and kingdoms. Do you know any kings? Have you ever come in contact with actual royalty? When we talk about kings, we normally talk about someone who has power and authority. Something that has power and authority over you, perhaps. So here's the question for you. Who or what has power and authority in your life? Is it a job? Is it status? Is it a resume or achievement? Is it food or health or kids or spouses or mothers or grades or degrees? Or is it just simply stuff? Who or what is running the show in your life? Who slash what kind of ruler or ruler is ruling over you today? Is it a kind of benevolent king or a violent, demanding, cruel dictator? Or maybe you are king of your own life. That's exactly what our culture has been telling us to do for a long time. You are the king and the queen. You're the master of your own domain. Take control of your destiny. It's meant to be. It's up to me. You can do anything you set your heart out to. You get to decide what's right and wrong. And don't let anyone tell you otherwise. Just live your truth, we hear. But here's the problem. When you enthrone yourself, bad stuff tends to happen. When you enthrone yourself, you have to build yourself up into something that you're not. A.K.A. you have to make yourself little gods. And you have to ignore the fact that you are a human being. You see, when you enthrone yourself, you have to stop being honest about your condition, the human condition known as sin. We talked about that last week. When you are the king of your own domain, you tend to overestimate your own potential and your own power. I can change the world is the motto. But you will fail yourself as a king. You will disappoint yourself as a sovereign. And you will fail and disappoint others. And you may discover that your truth that you have decided for yourself is, in fact, wrong. Sooner or later, hopefully sooner, we all will discover that the king has no clothes. And the power vacuum will make you angry and afraid. And compassion for yourself will fly out the window. And therefore, compassion for your neighbor will also fly out the window. And you yourself may become entitled, ungrateful, a violent dictator. Your kingdom will crumble, just like Saddam Hussein's crumbled, just like the Iron Curtain crumbled, just like North Korea is beginning to crumble. All the kingdoms of this earth will crumble. Both earthly kingdoms that were represented in the story have crumbled, and your kingdom will crumble. But, here's the good news. There's a better king. There's a better king, dear friend. And his kingdom is forever. His kingdom is forever because he is good. And he rules perfectly from the well-being and for his well-subjects and for the ones he calls his own. In other words... He is a king of love, and his kingdom is a kingdom of love. And this is not rainbows and lollipops and unicorns type statement. No, it's actually a bloody statement. By love, I mean giving of oneself. Sacrificing the self for the sake of others and the well-being of others. And that's exactly what our king has done. He didn't come to take over through acts of violence toward his enemies. He came to bleed and die for the sake of his enemies. You and me who constantly 
want to assert ourselves and our authority, he came to die for. In order to take away our sin, and in order to make us sons and daughters, and ultimately friends, he won by willingly losing to the ways of the kingdom in this life. But for what this sinner needs, what I desperately need, is a perfect king. You see, I don't need pomp and circumstance and courts and jewels. I need a sin bearer, a death destroyer. I need a king strong enough to take away my sin and loving enough to do it. I need a king who will adopt me into his family and call me his beloved and tell me all is forgiven. And that's exactly who Jesus is for me. His kingdom is forever because his king, he's a king of love and he demonstrated it in his death. The kings of this world say, take until you have it all. But Jesus says, I'll give until they have all that's mine. This world says, fight until you have won. But Jesus said, I'll die so that they can live. The world says, get all the power you can. But Jesus said, I'll give all power and serve the powerless, those who cannot help themselves. The world says, do better, try harder, more hours in the salt mines for you. But Jesus said, come unto me. His kingdom is not of this world. He comes to break oppression, to set the captive free, to take away transgressions and to rule in equity. He comes to those who suffer wrong, to help the poor and needy and bid the weak to be strong to give the songs of sight their darkness turned to light. Those souls condemned and dying are precious in his sight. His name shall stand forever. That name to us is love. Friends, Jesus is the king. Whether we like it or not, whether you make him king of your heart or not, he is king. So my only question this morning is this. Whose kingdom do you want to live in? Your crumbling kingdoms that will fall apart and go away? Or his eternal kingdom that is made up of love that says, come home. All is forgiven. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, after being reminded that Jesus is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, let us stand and profess what we believe through the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen.
Prayers of the People, Form 3, can be found on page 387. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That we all may be one. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. That they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. Today, we pray especially for Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, Susan, Jennifer, and Porter, our bishops, and Jonathan and Jim, our clergy. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. Today, we pray especially for Joe, our president, Ralph, our governor. We pray for peace amongst all the nations. Today, we pray especially for peace in those areas in strife. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may find favor in your sight. Today, we pray especially for work of all the congregations and clergy, the Church of St. Bartholomew's Richmond and St. Peter's Richmond in the Diocese of Virginia. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may be delivered from their distress. We pray for those who have died. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetually shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. Lord, hear the prayers of thy people. And what we have asked faithfully, grant that we may obtain effectually. To the glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now let us confess our sins to a loving God. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done and by what we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name, amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Keep you in eternal life. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. Let's greet each other in peace. Well, good morning. So glad you're joining us, even if just virtually. Welcome to Trinity. Would you send me a quick message letting me know that you're watching? I'm so glad you're with us this week and watching. A couple of quick announcements. The first is we have an evening of Moravian music tonight at 5 o'clock here in the church. Our choir Thank you, choir. They've been doing a wonderful job preparing for this wonderful concert. And so it's at 5 o'clock sharp. I invite you to come. It's free. And after the choir sings, I will lead us through Evensong to kind of conclude our Sunday evening of Christ the King Sunday. So I invite you to come and be with us here at Trinity, 5 o'clock. And then immediately following those services, we'll have a Moravian uh, reception over in Cox Hall. So join us. I'd love to see you there. Also want to bring to your attention that on December the 5th from 4 to 7 is our uh, Christmas party and auction. The Joy of Giving Christmas Party and Auction over in Cox Hall. All the proceeds from this auction go to charity and so it goes to the Trinity Outreach actually. And we will give all of that out to the different ministries that we support around here. And so I'd invite you to be a part of that. Join us for a wonderful party from 4 to 7. It's family friendly. Kids are invited. We'll have activities for them in the uh, Bishop's Garden and activities for you in the Cox Hall. So we'd love for you to come, see what's out available. The bidding will begin as soon as the party ends and will last for a week. So come and see what it is and uh, bid, bid big so that we can give big to those who we love in our community. And then I would invite you on Thursday night, we will have our annual community Chris, uh, Thanksgiving service, if you will. Pastor Lewis will be hosting it at Mount Pisgah this year, 
And so I would invite you to come and join us for our Thanksgiving service, 730 at Mount Pisgah. Well, with that, let's turn our hearts back to this table where it's a real reminder of what Jesus has done perfectly for us. He really is the King of Kings, and he invites us to his banquet each week where he gives us of himself free to remind us just how much he loves us, to remind us that we are forgiven, to remind us that we are loved, and to remind us that we are in. I'll invite you to remember the words of Jesus who said it is more blessed to give than to receive. And if you'd like to give, simply follow the prompts in the bottom of your screen. God bless you. I'll see you at the table. All things come of thee, O Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and good and a joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, 
our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, and he said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink this, do this in remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mysteries of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension. We offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. These are the gifts of God for you, the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your heart by faith with thanksgiving. If you please join me for our post-communion prayer. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. And now, may the peace of God be on each one of you this day, and until we meet again, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit, Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia.